No more waiting. <clears throat> no Let's more end waiting. Knots Week, baby. Let's end it strong. If you guys stuck around with us this long, we appreciate you so much. We love Not Scary Farm so, so much. Uh, we look forward to doing Knots and HHN Week every single year on the channel. Uh, HHN is now open, so if you haven't been, we're not we're not paid a sponsor. Just go check it out. But next week, opening night, Not Scary Farm. This is what we've been leading up to. Uh, we want to get you guys as hyped as we are, and what better way to end it with our most hyped mazes for the 50th anniversary of Not Scary Farm. How are you doing today, Sammy? I am well. Happy Friday. We are less than a week from the opening day of Not Scary Farm, which is super exciting. I'm excited to be following everything as we lead up to the 50th anniversary. But I'm more excited to talk about our most anticipated mazes today because I know me and Tony are not going to agree on every single one because we look at the event in a little bit of different ways. But so no need to to pass more time let's start here number 10 i'll start at my number 10 today i'll lead us off number 10. number 10 is a maze from 2019 was its first season let's go on down to the waxworks wow. the wax museum maybe our lists aren't necessarily too wacky because that's my number 10 as well yeah, my number 10 is Waxworks. It is a great maze, and I loved it its first season in 2019. I almost contemplated putting it above Origins, just because I felt like they were both neck and neck in 2019. Um, I really loved when they had the character out in front. Um, I forget the name of the character. That would basically introduce you to the Wax Museum, the one who was the creator. Um, so I, I was really excited, and I'm excited to to see this this maze this year. It's always a fun walk through. Devil's Den 3D is just an unreal experience every time. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Um, but I, I I think we've mentioned this earlier on in the week. Knotts has just been putting out banger after banger each and every year, and so I'm excited for every single maze. There's nothing I can say I can skip this this year. Um, and Waxworks isn't included in that. Um, so that's my number 10. Yeah, Waxworks is number 10 for me as well. Um, what Sammy said, pretty much, but the only thing I want to add in is uh, my only th wish, uh, and I hope they do it before it leaves, but we'll see, is uh, maybe take out one of the rooms and replace it with like a new part of the museum that we've never seen, but that exists in this lore. Um, it'd be cool to see like a new room just kind of based around some new wax figures and see what they can turn into that or like a couple new rooms. Um, but that's my only thing. Waxworks is a great maze. Um, a great story. Uh, gives me a uh, house of wax vibes. I think it does for a lot of people. Um, so yeah, I am super stoked for, uh, Waxworks, but my number nine, Dark Entities. I put Dark Entities this low only because, uh, yeah, I am a fan of it. It's a, it's a great maze. It does scare me. Um, I'm sad to see it go, but happy to see what comes next. Uh, but, yeah, I, I had to show Dark Entities a little bit more extra love in this list, only in the sense that um, it is its final year. Uh, it was a great time if we ever wanted to just go through a maze real quick. Always a great walk on. Um, and it's always nice to have the maze kind of a little bit by yourself since like if there's no one with you then you get the better scares in my opinion um so that was always fun to go through uh dark entities and whatnot but yeah i'm gonna miss it but i'm excited to see what comes next my number nine like tony's is dark entities it's wow. a fun it is a fun walk through each and every time i have so much joy walking through it with tony because of the various creatures along the way that he gets a little spooked by it's one of the few times I ever get to see Tony spooked so I get excited every time I can experience that and I, I'm just excited to take one last voyage I think it has done its time um, considering its first year was 2018 um, so it, it has done its time it has not been given the love I think it deserves because um, the concept is really cool um, but you know 
it's it's because I think because of that, there's been times where I've gone through it and there's not a you know a ton of scare actors throughout. And so because of that, it's kind of like it was fun. The scenic design is unreal. But you know, it's just not. It doesn't. It doesn't get all the love it deserves in terms of like how it's casted. Um, but my number eight is the depths. Oh wow, the last voyage again uh, for the depths. Uh, it's a great, great maze. So much fun. I love the undersea vibes. Captain Davy Jones, the various mermaids. Uh, the miners. I I just put it this low because they got rid of the cutscene in the beginning, or the what would that room be called? I don't know what it's called. The elevator mine we, shaft scene. But yeah, the mine shaft. Because they got rid of the mine shaft, I really felt like it lost the the thing that took it over the top. Because that mine shaft scene was super sick. Um, and really just kind of immersed you in that. Where now you kind of just walk through the caves and it's kind of like okay, cool. Cool. And you don't really get any character act interactions in the beginning of this maze. It's kind of more packed towards the middle and back. You kind of just are walking through in the beginning. Um, and so that's why I, I put it at, uh, at this place on my list. Where are you at at number eight? Number eight. Bloodline 1842. I really enjoyed Bloodline last year, especially with the guns, which I know a lot of people didn't like that. I still enjoyed it. Uh, but I will say because of the guns, you didn't really get to enjoy the scenic of it too much. And we've talked about this before on the channel. Um, but I, I want to see it now. And I'm hoping with the hints of this year that the guns aren't returning, hopefully. Uh, that's just kind of going based off speculation. Uh, I, I hope to get to enjoy this maze more and kind of appreciate it for all these massive sets they they build and, and whatnot. Um, so it, if they do take away the guns, this might go up higher on my uh, my ranked list. But uh, if they don't, this might just... If if they don't, this might just remain where it's at, to be honest with you. Okay. Well, that being said, number seven, the depths. Um. I love the depths so much. I love underwater stuff, uh, especially what they created with the depths. Um, you got a little cookbook action in there with that laser river, one of my favorites. Uh, one of my favorite effects that I see at countless haunts now. Um, and you got a little Bruce the Shark. You got a little little underwater ship that's like moving, and you can actually feel it. Feels like you're underwater. You got a giant squid. You got Davy Jones. You got these mermaids. You got you got all these like interesting underwater sea creatures, and uh, to see it go is going to be a little sad. But uh, that is a pretty good building in the house, and it has housed some pretty good mazes in the past. So I'm excited to see what comes next. Um, but yeah, depths is is always going to be up there for me. Your number seven. My number seven is Mesmer. Sideshow of the mind, I believe, is the official name. It is a once again another great house. I love the concept behind it, um, and I think it does a lot of great things through it. Uh, I loved when it was being announced. A little teaser that we got for it. It really got me excited for when this maze came, and so. But my fear is it's its third iteration now, and I feel like a lot of these mazes when they get towards their third fourth fifth iteration they kind of lose steam um you kind of know what's coming you've you've walked through it many times so you know you kind of have a feeling of the layout um, and so sometimes it can feel cut and dry like okay cool i'm walking in this room this is what's gonna happen i walk into this room i know what's gonna happen um, and so because of that i don't think there's any new updates to it last year we had the update in the beginning because uh, it kind of changed the pre-show up um, and, and filled it in the gaps a different way. Um, and I don't anticipate any changes again this year. Um, and so I feel like it's just, it's gonna be good, but I don't think it's gonna be in the upper echelons of what Not Scary Farm is offering this coming season. Number five is going to be Bloodline 1842. Wait, I'm um, sorry. That'd be number six. 
Oh, six. My bad. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Okay, cool. Doesn't change. The number doesn't change. I'm just reading up my list. So, Bloodline is my next one. 1842. Um, I'm excited. It kind of feels like it could be a fresh reimagining since they made an effort in both the website to say that you're only armed with your courage and your wits as well as during the announcement event saying the same thing so it kind of feels like we aren't going to have guns and so i'm excited to see how it feels without the guns i will i i i've i've been preaching it from the mountaintop that last year this maze was really beautiful great sets love the four design and how you walk through it but because of the guns you were just shooting at everything at least that's how i felt i was and because of that, you really didn't get the understanding of all the different tribes. Because there's good vampires, there's bad vampires. And I really just felt like, because of that, if you were a vampire, I was shooting. Um, and so the story kind of got lost. And I feel like that story could become a really cool part of this. Um, as well as the steampunk aspects of it are super fun. Um, and so I kind of feel like, ideally, if if everything we're reading is true, with a kind of reskin, it's going to be awesome. And the other part that I think is going to make this a better experience is last year, because of the guns, I feel like it kind of slowed down the line. And so it made that line really long. And so if they got rid of the guns, I feel like that can help speed it up and get better foot traffic through there. Um, and so that way you can experience this maze without having to wait two or three hours to get through it. I agree. I agree. Yeah, there you, that could very much help lines a lot. Number six for me, Mesmer, Sideshow of the Mind. Um, Mesmer was one of my favorites in 2021. Uh, it was another banger last year uh, to go back and see a whole new intro on it. But I know you said that. Um, I know that you said that. Um, you know, it may not change, but I still love the idea of kind of this being beyond the freak show. You know, this is this is like the psychology side of it, like you're starting to trip on something and this is what you're seeing. You know, you're seeing the freak show beyond the show. It's like you're going beyond it, like another dimension. And I really always thought that was really, really cool and interesting. And, and to see, you know, a lot of iconic things like the red door, you know, that's always a famous one. We love the red door here on the Knights of Horror. So, yeah, I'm excited for Mesmer to be back, and I cannot wait to go through it again. It's one of my favorites, uh, but I know it's not one of my girlfriend's favorites because she doesn't like snakes, and there's a giant snake in there, so, you know, it is what it is. Number five, though. Sammy, you're probably going to get a little sad when I say number five, but uh, number five goes to Origins, the Curse of Calico. At least it made the top five, okay? At least it made the top five, but Origins, the Curse of Calico, such a great <laughs> maze, such a great love letter to Ghost Town. Um, from start to finish, you go through most all the iconic buildings and scenery of Ghost Town, um, and they did such a great job, kind of rebuilding and reimagining it to a much like smaller scale, but also looks big. Um, the Easter eggs are unreal, and when we did this one on on the on the Behind the Fog tour, such a dream come true. We were like super hoping we were going to do this one, and. We got to do it like I think it was like one of the last few mazes that we got. Oh no, it was like the first maze we got to do, um, and it was just awesome. And then we got to go to Dark Ride and 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 Waxworks. So that it was a it was a really fun tour. I had a great time. So after seeing more Easter eggs on that tour, it really solidified its stamp in the history of Not Scary Farm. I I, I love it so much. Perfect, perfect. I don't appreciate the slander. Putting it so low, it should be number one on every list. And my number five or. I think is that five yes that's five it is the grimoire it was one of the newest mazes last season and it was a super awesome maze i really loved this one um we got to watch some back behind the scenes tours of people going through it um and kind of explaining the lore behind it but i, I think they do such a great job of telling the story of how this book the grimoire is basically when you read its story, it has a sinister impact onto those who turn the pages of it. And so I loved the creatures in there, love the black and white scenes, love the World War II scenes. And the scenic design is just unreal for this thing. Um, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and so it's something I'm very excited for. And I'll probably be a little bit more excited because it's not the newest maze. The line will probably be a little bit shorter this year, ideally. Um, so 
that it'll make, you know, the less time I wait in line, the happier I am. Because I get impatient after a while. So you do. I'm ex- I do. So I I'm excited. That. <laughs> I, I'm excited to see how this one plays out for this coming season. All right, my I'm on four, right? Correct. Cool. My number four, and I hate to put it this low because I love this maze so much, is Origins, The Curse of Calico. It should be number one on everyone's list. It should be, but it's not, unfortunately, because they decided it was three new mazes. <laughs> um, but it, it, I can't put it any lower than number four here because it's such a great, great maze. As, as Tony mentioned, it is a love letter to Ghost Town. Uh, the design I, is super awesome in there. I love the rain scene. Um, just because that's a really cool special effect they do there. Um, but just all of the lore in it is unreal. And, and basically the way they tell the story, I think it's a very easy story to digest. Basically seeing Mar- Sarah Marshall from her time of, you know, hey, we're going to hang you, basically to her putting a curse on the the citizens of Calico and turning them into monsters is super awesome. I love the interactivity of the, this line. It's a line I would be happy to wait in just because there's a lot of little things going on while you wait and they keep you entertained. You know, when you're walking in, you got the grave digger, you have the undertaker who's trying to size you up for your casket. You have the lull man or, or whatever, um, basically saying, hang that witch, always excited to hang that witch. Um, and and there, it's funny when you're, you know, it gets you really hyped, right? Because he's right there before you enter in and he's just talking to the crowd and keeping that energy high. So I, I really love Origins. Yeah, Chris number Calico. four for me. Grimoire. I thought Grimoire last year was phenomenal. Um, the fact that they went from color to black and white to back to like color, like the 80s, all the different decades and stuff, to get that further expansion of not only just the the origins of Ghost Town, but the witch itself. You know, they gave the book its own spinoff maze. Like, it doesn't get any better than that. Like, you you got to see what happened to this book essentially after uh, everything that went down in Ghost Town, Sarah Marshall, where this book traveled through all the years, you know, it, it was infected, it, it, you know, it, it, it put itself in World War II. So they're saying that's why a lot of what World War II happened. Like, I love when fiction alters reality. Like, it's really cool um, to see like a typical, you know, 60s family or 50s family just chilling right there. And then they just start killing each other. They already look all messed up and stuff. That was really cool to kind of base it around the 80s <laughs> at this campsite which they did a good job of building was really fun. Um, And to kind of see that ending of like the kids that you start off with in the beginning of the maze. And then by the end of the maze, you see them kind of all in the little uh, like, what is it? Uh, Not shells, but like they're in like these pods, like dead uh, because of the book. So I'm, Super excited that if in the future we do hopefully get like a sequel to this or something, because I'd love to see where can we go from here. We last left off in the 80s. Where are we taking it now? We go into the 90s. We're going to the early 2000s, the present day. Like how, how, do, how do we take this story and make a sequel out of it eventually? And I think it can be done. Um, so, yeah, Grimoire up there is one of the greatest. Perfect. Now we're in the top three. Lead us off with your number three here. Number three for me is going to the chilling chambers um for a lot of people that would probably be number one and i am super stoked for it i'm super excited for it uh but there's something about the other two that caught me a little bit more than this one did now this one sounds sounds really cool we got the new icon stepping in he's pretty much hosting the entire maze and it looks like it's going to be a throwback to years prior of some of the most iconic moments and and mazes of knots is passed i'm super stoked for that i keep seeing doll um doll factory on there and doll factory was a maze i remember vividly as a kid in 2008 um that facade was so creepy where the uh where origins is now um it was just so creepy so cool and to see that looking like it's kind of making a return because that is a fan favorite uh is so cool i get to kind of like finally see that as an adult now which I'm super looking forward to. Um, but yeah, Chilling Chambers, it looks like it's going to be a freaking banger of a maze, and I'm super stoked for it, and it's in a really good location, so it's in good hands. Yes, my number three. And I want to I want to say that these could have been in any order, because I'm really excited for all three. 
not saying I'm not excited for the other seven mazes coming, but I was really excited for all three of these. But putting them in an order is just so, so difficult. Um, but my number three will be Cinema Slasher. It, it, it looks like a promising, great new maze coming to the event. I think it's going to meet our expectations and then exceed them. Um, the fact that we're basically going to be transformed into these various films along the way, um, and we're going to encounter the slasher who is trying to kill us, seems kind of fun and seems kind of scary. I loved Dark Ride, and since it'll be replacing that location based upon my understanding of where things are going to be, I, I love the footprint of Dark Ride. It has a lot of potential because it is indoors, so they can control more things along the way. So I, I'm excited for it, but I'm just slightly more excited for the other two. Um, so number two for me will be Room 13. I'm excited to see where this goes. I saw a couple press releases um, of people who've gotten like early opportunities to kind of see what the scenic design looks like. And it proves to, it looks like it's going to be a really cool time. I love the tie into the scare zone with Goring 20s, the same way that I loved how Origins ties into Ghost Town. Um, so the fact that we can expand the lore from just walking through the streets, but being able to dive deeper into a maze is super awesome. If you watched our video yesterday where I dived into where our most anticipated scare zones were and shows, I talked about how I, I, I think that this maze is going to do a great job of enhancing Goring 20s. And so that's why I'm super excited for this one. Um, I'm not sure on what this footprint's going to look like ultimately, because it is coming in a new location. But I think whether it's a five minute walkthrough or it ends up being a three minute walkthrough, I think nonetheless it's going to be a great time throughout and i think it's going to do a great job of just telling a story um, and making everything feel more cohesive couldn't agree more that's why i chose that as my number two as well room 13 just gave me instant tower of terror vibes um i was a huge fan of that ride uh that kind of twilight zone aspect of things um and to finally get that backstory on the Devil's Elixir and where it comes from and, and why it does what it does, is this in relation to uh, the witch's curse of some sort? Are they going to tie in the grimoire to this? It is the 50th, so they could be doing things like this. And if they are, I'm all for it. To kind of, like I was just talking about with grimoire, this would be that spiritual sequel of like where the book ended up. Now it's in the fucking 20s, you know? Um this is what happened when it when it was in the twenties, you know. So uh, I'm excited to get the backstory of the Devil's Elixir to, to get more of a backstory of Memory Lane and to kind of see these hotel sets because I was a huge fan of Horror Hotel last year, and like I said, I'm a huge fan of of Tower of Terror the ride, uh, and I love that opening like lobby facade that they give you. That's great. So I'm excited to see what Knotts puts together, and, and being that this will be one for to stay for a few years, which I'm kind of happy about, I get to see it more than once. So I'm super stoked for this one. Can't wait. But not as stoked as I am for my number one most hyped maze for this season. And by process of elimination, of course, you guessed it. Dark Entities twice. Oh, wow, dude. You really guessed it. <laughs> Cinema Slasher. Uh... I think this one called out to me the most out of the three that were announced in the sense that uh, I love film. I love going to the movies and to kind of because they kind of mentioned this one being like you're going to see some throwback stuff as well, you know, from previous years and stuff. But it's going to be like its own original thing. So they're going to be like original stories like you're going to be going through the ma uh, the movie screen. Um and they're going to go you're going to go through all these journeys and stories and stuff. So I'm excited to see where they pull this one off. I, ultimately having this like grand like slasher kind of like on the loose as well. Um I think it would be really cool uh especially cuz we know how that floor print is for Dark Ride, which is a really good floor print print. Um what would be really cool is like in the beginning like how they had for Dark Ride where you first entered the Dark Ride and it kind of looked like everything was working but malfunctioning. They can easily turn that into a movie theater where they have seats and the giant projection screen. And then as you enter the the screen, you go through each room and each room is a different film. I don't know. I have so many crazy idea theories for this one. But when I heard this one, I knew I was going to fall in love with it. Um, so I, I cannot wait. But uh, 
Sammy, tell me why the Chilling Chambers is your number one. Yes, I would love to. This is, I think, if you go to their website currently, it is when you scroll up, not Scary Farm Mazes, first one on the list, the Chilling Chambers. You have the Keeper, and they've made an effort to be like, hey, the Keeper is taking you through this. They had him at Midsummer Scream. They've had him at the announcement event. You could have taken pictures with him at both Midsummer Scream and the announcement event. And so I think they're funneling a ton of funds or funds to make this a, a prime maze. Um, and, and then the fact that it ties into the, the beginning um, for the inaugural maze in 1977, 10 Chilling Chambers. Um, and it's going to pay tribute to the last 50 years of Scary Farm, um, but just give a, a, a reskin on it. Um, and really take you through original characters. Um, and so I'm excited to see what this ends up being. I, I just think that there's a lot of great things. I know that we've been crying out for this on this channel for a little while as we were leading up to the 50th. We want a tribute store, but it's it's a legacy store, but kind of mm. similar vibes. Um, and we got that. And then we were like, hey, we want a good tribute maze. And I think this is going to be it. I think Cinema Slasher is also going to be a great tribute maze, but I think the ultimate tribute maze is going to be Chilling Chambers, just because I think this is something they've been building and and really trying to put an emphasis on. And I'm excited to see how it can eventually tie into the stories of Origins and the Grimoire um, and seeing how the Green Witch may fit into this um, and seeing how the Keeper fits into this and how it pays homage to uh, Sinister Seymour from the first and second scary farm. So I think there's a lot of great things going on with this. And so that's why I'm super excited to be able to enter this when I do visit Not Scary Farm this coming season. But tell us what you are most excited for by dropping a comment down below. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button uh, so that way you can follow along as we venture to Not Scary Farm and various other haunts events for this 2023 season as well as turn those bell notifications on so you can be notified when we do post this content um, and so you can be one of the first ones to see it. Um, but all in all, we really enjoyed this Not Scary Farm week, and we hope you all enjoyed the week as well. And if nothing else, we'll see you in the fog. Peace. Yeah.